Our next talk is Hand Cut Paper Pet Portraits, presented by Bridget Foster Reed. There actually is a more difficult way to say paper pet portraits, it's a German word uh, for paper cutting, but I won't say that. <laughs> So this started, this is Chica, and I started, um, I had this art show outside, and this woman walks by, and she didn't even plan on coming to the show, and she sees I have these paper pet portraits, and she walks up and says, I want one of those. And I'd only done one for my mom, because no one's better than mom to, you know, try to do art for them, like she'll always put it on her fridge. <laughs> so, she's like, I want one, and I was like, great, and then she goes, okay, I'm going to go get my dog, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> awesome. And she gets the dog, I take a picture of her, and she's, you know, joking that Carn Terriers are really difficult dogs to do because their fur is all in their eyes and they're all one color. So I was like, let's do this. So I did it and it, it, it was a really fun experience. So how I got there was, I'm traditionally a painter and I do drawing, so I'd never really done a paper before. And I got way too comfortable doing that. So. <coughs> When that happens, it's almost like muscle memory where you're just so used to doing it that it becomes automatic. And so to get myself out of that, I picked something I absolutely loathed, which was geometric shapes and uh, straight lines. So what I picked instead of a pencil, which has a very broad range of motion, was an X-Acto blade. So and I literally picked the one that was the most difficult to use because they do make them that you know curve, but I got one that's really straight, so if you literally do it too much, it snaps. Um, so the other reason why I love using this process is that it has a limited color palette. So with paint, you can mix any color you want, which sounds great, but it's actually not. So with paper, you can pick any color you want and switch it out really quick. So with paint, you have to wait for it to dry and you get really lazy, just keep mixing the same color. And you often paint what's right in front of you. But with paper, so I use paper from Michael's, the scrapbook paper. And you only have a certain amount of colors, so you have to make it work. So like with that Dalmatian, you know, there's only a certain amount of cream colors that I had, so I used purple. Um, so the process is I get a photo from a customer, and a lot of times they ask me, like, what, what photo do you want me to give you? And, you know, it's never like, I don't say, like, oh, I want a three-quarter view with a cast shadow, like, on a, you know, a column, a green column. I say, what, what picture you know, means the most to you of your pet? And they're like, are you sure? So one I got recently was this grainy photo of a cat in a bathroom drawer, just like picking up out. And I was like, no, that's your cat, so we're going to do it. Um, so I draw the animal, and then it's almost like color by number, where I map out what colors I want to use, um, almost like a puzzle. And it's, I don't necessarily always stay with um, stay with the colors. I often switch it out because the crazy thing about this is you never know what it's going to look like. Um, so then I cut it out the exacto blade, I glue it on where the negative space is, and then sometimes I literally have to use tweezers for like the very small um, parts. Like one time my sister came in and was like, what are you doing? I'm like, shh, I'm trying to put this like pupil on this chihuahua. <laughs> She's like, okay. Um, and the whole great part of doing these pet portraits is it's a rigid medium with an organic subject. So I used to paint and draw pen and inks, and that's why I thought those would be the best to get the personality of the animal, but it's actually not because it's your pet. So the personality is most highlighted when there's actually less of the fur, which you can, and there's another snaggle tooth uh, pug. So uh, you want to get away from you know, drawing every single piece of fur, even though it's very fun. You want to just do the personality of, of the pet. And it was important for me to do drawing and painting for all those years because it, it got it out of my system. So, and I literally said I would never do anything with you. I'm like, you're an organic person, like I'm not that person. But, um, and now I'm doing pet portraits on a paper. So, they're, uh, they're so much fun and you know, they're really great for me to give them to people and um, to have them, you know, for their pets, so. Aww. Yeah, that's Odin. <laughs> yeah, and these are like a uh, size 8 by 10, so they're pretty small. So I'm actually used to working very large, but um, these are very, very little, and that's another one that's fun. And yeah, dogs that are monochromatic are, are super difficult if they don't have those, like, traditional, um, markers of what kind of dog they are, so that's where I use those crazy wild colors. So with um, the Carn Terry, I like pick, pick out the blues and the greens. 
you think you might start making your own paper? Or are you happy with the limited color palette? I do love the limited color palette because it really does force me to use, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's new. So with Noodle, like, I would have never picked purple if I had picked my own paper. Yeah. And that's like the fun part of it, is using those different colors. Because with paint, you can, you know, mix whatever you want. Yeah. 